There's a couple different situations happening around the NFL where, you know, the buzzword of culture. And every time somebody says culture, they actually say, you know, the buzzword culture. We always talk about it. But it's very on display in certain situations. For instance... The Pittsburgh Steelers played the Indianapolis Colts this past weekend. Now, there was a situation that involved George Pickens. Okay, mm. George Pickens on a Jalen Warren mm. end around, basically, running right at him. He's really the only person out there to block. On the video, you know, he appears to give up his block, stay out of the way, and then jump over EJ Speed, who flies Ooh. around Ooh, to the football. Does. He's oh. an absolute dog. We're very thankful he's there. That video obviously hit the internet, and everybody was critiquing the effort level that was given, especially around the end zone, to a team that could still make a run oh, if yeah. they win games. Playing against a Colts team that is trying to win the AFC South. This isn't the only situation that's happened like this for the Pittsburgh Steelers this season. Deontay Johnson had a situation mm -hmm. earlier where he didn't hop on a fumble or chase something down. There's another interception situation where George Pickens didn't chase down the, the pick. He actually was running away from it. So there's a lot of things being called into question in the Pittsburgh Steelers operation right now, including from Ben Roethlisberger. So George Pickens was asked about this particular play, the blocking play, by Pittsburgh media. Now, if you're from Pittsburgh, you know exactly who's asking this question. But basically, everybody, there was only a couple people that were over there mm -hmm. interviewing George Pickens at this particular time. So they shared the audio with everybody. So we were told to give credit to all of Pittsburgh mm -hmm. sports media okay. for this particular audio. But here's George Pickens talking about the blocking play. The Jalen Warren run toward the end zone, what'd you see on that? And uh, would you handle that differently if you had to do it over again? No, I was just trying to... Uh prevent the Tank Dell situation, the same thing that happened to Tank Dell. Uh, I didn't want to get an injury. Uh, you know, when you stay on the block too long, you can get ran up on very easy. So, so there's some people questioning your effort. There's yeah, people. all the people that's questioning my effort, down, 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 play football, they do what y'all do. Okay, so I do appreciate <laughs> that he has built up quite a hatred for the media. He mm -hmm. did a interview... Uh, a, a, conference, a press conference at his locker in another interview portion here the last couple of days, and he took a couple shots at guys that never played ball before, yeah. guys that uh, obviously building up a lot of narratives about me. He's heard it all, I think. And that was, uh, you know, he's using his outside voice for mm -hmm. that particular. He should have kept that one inside. Yeah. yeah. I think that's our big takeaway as soon as we hear it, because anytime somebody who wants to build a narrative about somebody hears something like that, they are definitely going to be like, I ain't want an injury. Yeah. Okay. Is that... Hmm. I ain't want an injury. That's why you're not going to give effort. And that got real loud. Remember, George Pickens can throw people around oh, yeah. and has demonstrated that he would throw people around. Here's some clips from last year. Ah! Woo. See you later. And that. he even mentioned this in his press conference. He said, like, Ooh. last year, the same. He was down at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. uh, he said the last year, people were telling me how good of a blocker I am. Now the same people telling me I'm not the same blocker and everything like that. So George Pickens is certainly a target of conversation in Pittsburgh, around the Pittsburgh sports media. But whenever you see other teams, okay, and how their wide receivers operate, yeah. it's hard not to be like, oh, this feels like this is a total buy-in culture situation as opposed to just a one-player situation. Now, these teams that we're about to show are going in a different direction than Pittsburgh Steelers. I think we all agree with that. Mm -hmm. But all of them still have playoff hopes mm -hmm. and aspirations that could be in there. Let's look at the Detroit Lions, for instance. Here's a football team that has their culture, we all assume. They're trending in the right direction. Look at Amon Ross St. Brown in the end zone, mm -hmm. pushing him there. Now, obviously, running back is coming up behind him, so he could get run up on. But instead, he's driving guy into end zone, keeping him out of there. Let's go to the San Francisco 49ers now, shall we? San Francisco 49ers, this is a huge huge part of their entire run game mm -hmm. and it's a huge part of Christian McCaffrey who come out who comes out and says like listen the reason why we are so good at running is because we have buy-in from everybody, yep. whether it's Brandon Ayuk what? or Debo Samuel what? or Jawan Jennings. What? Wide receivers blocking for the San Francisco 49ers is a massive piece of the puzzle. And this is a similar type situation that happened with George Pickens where his eyes are away. And look at Ayuk Donner driving, turning, Debo driving, turning. This is just what they do. They buy into it all. So if you see George Pickens in that particular play and you see Amon Ross St. Brown and you see the highlights from Juwan Jennings and you see the highlights from Ayuk and Debo and everybody in other teams, to me, it's not just like George Pickens not giving effort there. Like George Pickens should at least faked that he was doing that. Yeah. Like if he's thinking about the Tank Dell broken fibula or whatever the hell happened, rolled up on, which does happen in those mm -hmm. things, like – I, we get it, you're a human, but also you at least got to give fake effort, you know, publicly. Mm -hmm. Like, and also inside voices, 
You don't need to tell everybody no. that you don't want to block. But I think it's more indicative of like the cultures. Like Detroit's culture is like, yeah. Niners culture, yeah. Mm-hmm. And right now the Steelers culture just seems like, you know, when you're saying that type of stuff, do the coaches know that he's worried about getting hurt? Because he's the one point block pretty mm-hmm. much over there. Are they just now learning that after hearing that from him? That comes back to a culture type thing in my eyes, AQ. And that is the biggest storyline that I think is not being taught. Everybody's talking about George Pickens. It's like, okay, cool. But how about like the overall mindset of like we're all in this together, which the teams that are going to go on a run are in and the teams that are going to fall off and we don't. It's a wild scene right now. I think you nailed it. And the thing that we're not talking about enough is everybody uses these terms, right? They're so clear cliche culture 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 what does that mean it's details and it's in the details we talk about it all the time in the offensive line room when you don't keep your feet moving that's when the injuries happen that's when you get rolled up on when the feet are out of the ground and they're constantly moving when you watch St. Brown and he's finishing the play not looking back seeing where the running back is when you watch Debo Jennings and Kittle and all those guys right and Ayuk right downfield they're constantly moving their feet and when that happens you can't get rolled up on. It's fa- it's it's crazy because we're literally watching the culture publicly here. Yeah. Like that is what yeah. we are seeing. Yeah. You hear the way Fred talks and CMC talks, and then you hear that answer given by George Pickens. And we are, I think George Pickens is a dog. I think he's incredibly mm-hmm. talented. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's been some situations at quarterback here to start his entire sure. NFL career, and it's not desirable. But I think if he uses inside voice and just phrases <laughs> that differently, I think we just move past this. But instead, I ain't want an injury. I don't want to. Uh, I think about Tank Dell, like. Then you got everybody from that. You're like, oh, that's what you're thinking about when you're about to score a touchdown when you're still in playoff contention? Yeah. It's just a wild way to handle it, which I think does showcase what's going on behind the scenes there. Yeah, it's the biggest thing. And, and you know, obviously a lot of people are talking about Tom. That we, he, the standard is the standard. That's his thing, right? And the Pittsburgh Steelers culture has been a great thing for a long time from the outside looking in. You heard Big Ben talking about it. And once you start losing – that's when everything gets put under my magnifying glass. It's Deontay Johnson one week, it's Pickens one week, it's somebody else. Minka made the comments kind of about the, the whole team. Mm-hmm. Like just because you put this black and gold on doesn't mean it's just going to happen. I'm sure he's frustrated at the same time. You know, ben, especially we, we know how dependent this game is regardless of what position you play. But receiver, I think, is probably the most dependent position. You got to have a good O line, you got to have a good play call, you got to have a good quarterback. What? So when you are talented, you get frustrated. You're not getting targets. You run a bunch of five yard outs or back shoulders, mm-hmm. this, that, and the third. But to your point, gotta use your inside voice. And that is the thing. I've been hurt like that. Um, my senior year in college, I got hurt, you know, blocking uh, for one of my kick returners. You get rolled up. I don't know how offensive linemen, I don't know how to, we don't get that injury every, every I know play. Lane yeah. Johnson, he just got rolled up on this uh, past primetime game. Debo Sammy, even with that block, he was pushing him, but you kind of. You kind of feel it. You kind of turn Mm -hmm. him. You try to get out of the way. So there is a concern with that as a receiver. Definitely get that. But to your point, outside voice. And I think if he – he's going to be bigger and stronger than most cornerbacks he lines up across. So if you just give that full effort and push him and at least get out of the way that way, anybody can look at it and say, hey, he's giving full effort. And you can be concerned about injury. That's not a bad thing. But we understand. Once you start losing, yeah. yeah. Once you start losing, <clears throat> now everything is going to be. You know, um, everybody's going to point at. Hey, this is the reason. This is the guy. You don't want ever want to be that guy. Yeah, at least give a hand. You know yeah. what I mean? And mm-hmm. tank tail injury is obviously nasty. And uh, it shouldn't have he, been. Any yeah, he, it's yeah. So he was a lead blocker. Yeah. Interesting mm-hmm. situation. Goal line situation as well. Kind of much tighter as opposed to. Yeah. Out on the outside where there's less bodies mm-hmm. inside. A lot of bodies He's digging out of safety. I mean, he was he was given. Ton of effort on that's that. Yeah. That's that offensive tree, though. That whole tree. That's yep. Shanahan yeah. tree. McVay, Shanahan, uh, Slowick, obviously out there. All bunch of tight splits. You see Puka Nakua do it all the time. Insert blocks. So that is part of the game. Uh, Pittsburgh doesn't do it as much, but that's the part of the game as a receiver. That's that shows that you're fully bought in. But at the same time, protect yourself. Understand Use that inside protect, voice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it just don't tell everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is. I think that was the big mistake here. Now, granted, you're going to get questioned regardless because a couple weeks ago, well, he took all his social media stuff. Yeah, right? he did. He did. Right. He did. Yeah, right. Yes, he stuff. did. Just went on there and say, you know what? Mm-mm. Delete. Not anymore. Done. And he had to scroll back through. He saw a post of him like <laughs> catching a Pittsburgh Steeler Yenzer t- a terrible towel. Mm-hmm. Delete that. Guy. Damn it. Get it out of here. <laughs> he was at a charity event with his arm around a guy wearing a Steelers jacket. Mm-hmm. He deleted it. Yep. Delete he deleted guy. all Steelers stuff. Mm-hmm. So that potentially also built up the fans to say, hey, team stinks. You don't want to be here? Okay. All right. So then whenever this pops up on film, it's going to get very loud. But I don't think he's the only human in the history of the NFL that has thought this and done mm-hmm. this. He just needs to maybe not be so loud and blatant about it. But also, 
know, maybe George Pickens trying to get the hell out of town. Ooh, yeah. Which, you know, I, I, uh, it could be. What a wild play. That, that sucks uh, yeah. to, to have to go through that if you're Mike Tomlin or a Pittsburgh Steeler potentially. But if he doesn't want to be a Steeler, a good way to do that would just be like not give effort on something. But he did have a long catch, broke a tackle. Remember down the right sideline? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He did have a, a yeah. couple splash plays in there. And I think this is why like I've been frustrated for most of the year and Steelers fans have been frustrated for most of the year because wins and losses are, are one thing thing but like they're losing and and they don't look like the Steelers that we grew up I there was the I sent in a graphic uh last night that they haven't become they haven't come in last place in the division since 1988 that was the year that I was born so I've never seen them come in last in the division 88 you 88. know how many different divisions they've been oh in too I mean, NFL has yeah. changed so much so since like then. winning and losing is gonna happen obviously that I mean it's the NFL but like it's the way like and you talked about Minka bringing it up and just like the last couple years the run defense hasn't you like you grow up with the steel curtain and then be able to they they didn't give up a hundred yard rusher for, for like three seasons but like it's the it's the stuff that happens that that hasn't happened in the past and the culture and you grow up with Heinz Ward blocking mm -hmm. one of the best blocking wide receivers of all time yeah ever yeah not scared take former pride quarterback in. yeah goes the wide receiver yeah yeah, it goes, goes six to midnight whenever he, yeah. he blinds. It's just when everything yeah. looks so different than what you grew up on. That's the first And then there isn't part. success. Correct. Yeah, because it's, I mean, if it was if it was like a typical, like, hard nose, like, and they're just not winning games, it's not, that's one thing. But if it's everything looks completely different than what you've, that you've come to know, that's another thing.